All right. It's the afternoon. I'm still trying to play catch up. And what do I got here? Well, this says SJ something. I don't I don't really know. It's um saying that it's Bristolian rock genre bounding composition featuring a cast of collaborators melding diverse moods and styles into one buoyant, bold, and cohesive whole. Well, it's limited to a thousand copies put out on Anticon Records written and produced by Sam Westernoff from 2008 in Europe. Well, why do I have this small vessel LP? Well, it was on Amazon Prime. A couple of bucks. And free shipping. And it showed up in my suggested purchases. And being that it's a full length, it seemed like it had some interesting cover art. I don't know if you see the people floating on the bug rafts. And I figured for a couple of dollars, it would make for an interesting conversation piece nonetheless. So, with zero expectation whatsoever. I mean, absolutely no idea what this sounds like. It could be total garbage. I am going to listen to this album. And uh, you can too. Links below, assuming I find them online. And let's do this. Let's give this LP a listen. Let's see what it's all about. Small vessels. I have to say that I know why it was cheap. Um, but I mean no disrespect. Um, it's a good it's a good pressing. I mean uh, they did a, a nice job of releasing it. Um, I think the artwork is really cool. It's probably my favorite part of this, even more so than the uh, music. Which is unfortunate for them, but I like this right here with the um, pre-rendered image of the ocean there, and then they've got the watercolor octopi, octopus <laughs> on the life raft there. Um, don't really know what that's supposed to mean, but as you can see, there's a bunch of thanks, and uh, I don't know any of these names. Um, but that's cool. I mean, I like being introduced to new things. Um, the O is kind of, you know, mysterious. I mean, that could be anything, but, um, you know. Sam, um, Sam Westernoff, who seems to be the lead of this operation, the main guy, thanks the small vessel players, or so he calls the people who perform in this band with him. It includes... Charlotte, Joseph, Howard, Stephen, Max, Dan, Rose, Ruth, Emma, Jen, Adrian, Brick, Caleb. And why do I list off all these names? Well, let's take a look at that. You have that many people in a band. And, well, unfortunately, unless you're a really good band, it can be noisy at times. And this record is. Um, and it is also sort of... Uh, shamelessly saturated in uh, attempts at making it sound different or new, but what it comes across as being is somebody who really liked In the Airplane Over the Sea. Um, and that's a record that I love. Um, I don't love it all the time, and I don't think Neutral Milk Hotel is a good live band, but I like that album. And you can kind of tell that this person likes that album, and if they don't, and it's just coming through, then... Wow, because there's a lot of similarities there. Um, also, if you like Chin Up Chin Up, Ugly Casanova, Beirut, you might dig this. I mean, it might sort of fall into that, uh, you know, sort of over-instrumented uh, album. But, uh, as I sort of really enjoy a Chin Up Chin Up or Ugly Casanova, I didn't fully enjoy this. And, let me say what's good about it. it it's got a low production, but in that sense it's charming. Like, it kind of comes out and says, look, this is what we could do. And I like that. Being somebody who makes music 
and a, a student of music, if you will. I think that it's a testament to any, you know, new artist, new band to sort of like push and push to get something out there, regardless of, uh, you know, maybe a financial backbone and being able to be consistent um, or I guess motivated consistently long enough to complete an album is, uh, is a task in and of itself. And with that, I think that a lot of this was recorded live, and I don't mean like at a show or something. I think it was recorded with the band playing together, it wasn't tracked, and then there was some overdubbing. And what do they do well overdubbing? Well, there's harmony um, a lot of times with multiple vocal that sounds really nice. Um, but I, I find myself wishing I knew what they were saying. There's a very soft use vocal element that is carried throughout the entire record that sort of um, de leaves the vocals getting lost. Uh, they're they're hard, to, hard to understand or interpret or even hear in the first place, and they become almost absent to the music. And if I was to guess, I would think that the music was all written first and the vocals were an afterthought, which is okay at times, but when there's some sort of play, playfulness in here that makes me think that there's supposed to be like a pop structure, then the vocals kind of lose that, and then you get this sort of like messy, like overly done song, and then they try to bring it all back together again. It it sort of feels cut and paste. And I'm in more of the mind that says you either have something that's very constructed or you have something that's very avant-garde. But you don't try to make the two and, you know, sort of put it together in the end. And to that, I don't think that this is a great record. Um, some editing, you know, some of the afterthoughts out might have been... You know, it might have been a plus. Take some of it out of there, because the, the best way I could describe this overall is it sounds very delicately aggressive. And that seems like something that would be cool, but not in the sense of, like, Deaf Heaven. Deaf Heaven could then be delicately somber and these beautiful ambient build-ups and then insanely, like, death metal, black metal, just, like, loud... That's delicate and aggressive at its best. This, on the other hand, is just... It sounds like a bad Neutral Milk Hotel record, and I know bad is an opinionated word. It says that this is no good, and so I try not to use it, but... It's, it's rough. Because here's the thing, this record really wants to pull me in. And I think if you listen to it with, like, an open mind, it should pull you into. Like, there's a lot of interesting things going on. The problem is, is staying there. It's hard to hang out in a space that, one, is continually changing, and two, doesn't really have the chops to keep you there. And I think that's just sort of like a rehearsal of maybe the fact that this guy's playing with a bunch of different people all the time. He doesn't really have a, a foundation of success built yet, you know? And, and that's the difference between being a solo musician and putting out your own work, being a band and putting out a collective work, or being a solo musician who chooses to write a bunch of songs with a bunch of different people, which is what this is. And I think that, you know, disconnect is really obvious. Um, and unfortunately, it comes across sounding a little contrived, a little bit too too much, like trying too hard almost, um, which leads me to say the record itself is almost pointless. It doesn't leave me wanting to listen to it again. It doesn't leave me wanting more. And unfortunately, I'm probably going to be putting this up for sale. So if I've offended anybody who likes these guys and you really love this, and you don't have this, by all means, let me know. Maybe I'll just send it to you for free because I would hate to offend somebody, but I'm being honest in saying that I don't think it's all that good. Sorry. Now, talking on a finer note about distinction in genres, being a person who plays music and makes music, I always think that it's cool if a band can sort of bridge the gap between different styles of music and, and sort of reinvent themselves or, or not be confined to one genre. 
And that is to say, maybe something that should be left alone from an album to an album's perspective, or at least done with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a cognizant approach that you're thinking about it when you're doing it so that maybe one song to the next sort of bridges the two and it doesn't just sound scattered. And to that effect, I think an album, and we're talking an album review here, an album is a real solid album when it's a collective work that starts and finishes well, that is so well-rounded that you don't want to skip around on tracks. Um, being a person who listens to vinyl records, skipping on tracks rarely happens. Um, you play them through, and when you find yourself not really wanting to listen to a song, which unfortunately happened a few times for me during this play, it's... It's more frustrating than enjoyable, and music shouldn't be frustrating. So, I'm going to have to give this record a D, uh, a 6 out of 10 at the very best, maybe a 5, but that those are, are almost sympathy points for trying and for putting it, uh, putting it out there, and for being, you know, savvy enough to, to take some risks. So, overall, not the best effort. Um, but a fun experiment. And what I really liked about this, from my, my so to speak, uh, perspective is when I did these videos, or when I, I set out to did, do these videos, is the concept is to hear an album and then to sort of give you that immediate, you know, human response. Uh, what do I think about this in real time? And a lot of people spend their time, uh, and I mean by a lot of people, I mean a lot of music reviewers, Spend their time sort of beating something to death, you know, researching what other people thought, what are the buzz about it, and, um, you know, 43 listens in, this is what I think, and I kind of think that if you listen to something long enough, you're going to find yourself liking it regardless. Um, really good example, I can remember being like 10 years old, a Joan Osborne song, What If God Was One Of Us. That song got on my nerves to no end when I was younger. And I don't know why, because it's not a bad song, but I didn't want to hear it. And it kept coming on everywhere I was at, from Subway to the mall, and my mom's car, everywhere I was at, that song was there. And uh, be it as it may, the longer I heard it, the more accepting of it I became. And eventually I find myself singing along to it, and I sort of liked the song. If you're going to, you know, put yourself in a place where you have to think about music subjectively, I think there's two places for it. Yes, there is the educated person who takes all of the chord structures and all of the melodies and all of the, you know, process and production and the lyrical content and you meld those together and you give somebody this, you know, Harvard standard write-up or you talk about it to a point where you can say without a shadow of a doubt or whatever. But you know what? Those people are still giving opinion. And it's only the opinion of the artist that I want to give something a little different. And that is something that most people have a little bit more time for. And that's to hear something once or twice and spit out, you know, what do you think of it? And unfortunately, we live in such a fast-paced society where if you don't have time, you don't make time either. And it really goes without saying that if you don't like something, odds are good you're going to know right away. If you don't like my reviews... You're probably not tuning in long enough to get to this part, but maybe you are, maybe you're here. Maybe you've clicked around and you found something interesting in some of my thoughts, and that's great. I'm not here to make you love my reviews, I'm just here to inform a little bit. And with that, talking about being informed about music from a place that I think most people can relatively easily get to, which is on a singular pass, possibly a second pass, what is it doing for you? What do you make of it? And unfortunately, on a singular pass, I would rather just pass. So, uh, not a lot of love for Small Vessel, but, you know, cool artwork. Uh, again, uh, a 6 or a D. Let's leave it at that. Let's just call it good, okay? 
Anyhow, I am Joey. I always appreciate your time. Find me on Facebook, Daily Vinyl Online, Instagram, Daily Underscore Vinyl, and of course right here on the YouTubes. So, like the video, comment below, tell me how bad I am for not liking this if you love it, or tell me how much you agree. Either way, let's get a conversation started. If you share, please use the hashtag 365 album reviews in 2016. That'll make our conversation easier to track. Um, and if you're looking for records, and I can guarantee you this will be there soon, I do sell some sometimes on Discogs. Just look up Daily Vinyl and you will see I have a very good rating and probably about 500 LPs for sale right now, and they're always changing. So. Keep your ear to the ground and your face to the screen, pause it, do whatever you need to when you're listening to the music, but come back and talk the things with me that have to do with each and every one of these albums in 2016. Thank you so much. Very much love. I'm Joey. Talk to you later.